everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Today I'm going to be doing the Picture This book tag. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. And today I'm going to be doing the Picture This book tag which was created by the lovely Jack at Spread Book Joy and the lovely Shelley Swearingen, both of whom are hosting the Picture This 2022 readathon, all about reading as many brilliant picture books as you can in the month of April. Jack and Shelley have created this tag and they've both kindly tagged me in it, so I thought I would get on and do it. So there are eight prompts for this one, and the eight prompts are all named after famous children's books. Without any further ado, let's get straight into the questions. Number one is um, based on the book Love You Forever by Robert Munch, illustrated by Sheila McGraw. And it says, name a book you imagine you'll love forever. Well, the first one I want to mention is a picture book. I will definitely love this picture book forever. I have great fondness for Each Peach Pear Plum by Janet and Alan Allberg because this was the first book I could ever read. <laughs> and when I say read, I mean I knew it off by heart. And I think this is a wonderful book featuring lots of different fairy tale nursery rhyme characters. And I just think it's absolute work of pure genius. And I'm never not going to love this book. Adult book wise, um, I found it a bit more tricky, but I'm going to go with one of my very favorite books of all time, The Book Thief by Marcus Cizak. I can't see there being a time when I won't love this book. I just think it's such a brilliant um, tale of learning to read and um, the importance of literacy. I just absolutely love the characters in this book and I think it will be a favourite for all time. Question two is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, Very Bad Day by Judith Vorscht, illustrated by Ray Cruz. Which books or comforting things do you turn to when you are having a bad day? So, picture books first. I picked a couple of picture books for this prompt. Um, this is one that always cheers me up because it's absolutely crazy. There are cats in this book and I discovered this while I was teaching. It has flaps and things in it and it's just a wonderful, wonderful book to cheer you up. Um, I also am made very cheerful by reading the book by Lauren Child, um, Charlie and Lola, but excuse me, that is my book. This one's all about Charlie and Lola's trip to the library and Lola wants to get her favourite book, which she believes to be her book, which is Beetles, Bugs and Butterflies. And she is absolutely horrified to think that Beetles, Bugs and Butterflies might not be there because somebody else might have borrowed it. Such a fantastic book, always cheers me up. And in my adult years, a much more, a, a very cheering up pitch book is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse by Charlie Mackesee. I absolutely love this book and it's full of beautiful drawings and just sayings that really, really cheer me up. So it's absolutely beautiful and it can always cheer me up. And my favourite books that cheer me up all the time are right here on the shelf behind me the Georgia Nicholson series by Louise Rennieson. So funny, I've read them multiple times and they always cheer me up. The other thing that always cheers me up that isn't a book is pizza. Um, if I'm having a really bad day, I, I like to have a pizza to cheer me up. Right, number three is The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. Which book, character or series sparked your hunger for reading? So one of the earliest series I can remember reading on my own was the Just William series. I can still picture myself um, sitting behind the sofa for some reason in my old house reading a Just William book from the library. So fond memories of those. I think probably around the same time uh, the Secret Seven books were really, really entertaining me. Uh, I liked Famous Five as well, um, by, but Secret Seven by Enid Blyton were my favourites. And at later times in life, so when I was a teenager in the high school library, the author that really sparked off a lot of reading was Christopher Pike. Um, my friends and I were obsessed with these books and yeah, 
absolutely loved reading those in my teenage years. In my adult years, a series that sparked off my hunger for reading crime books was Ian Rankin's Knots and Crosses. Once I read this, I had to read all of the uh, Rebus series by Ian Rankin, and my husband and I And my husband and I have both enjoyed these. Yeah, Harry's just climbed onto the shelves behind me. Hi, Harry. Um, you might see him popping in and out of frame. Um, yeah, I picked this up from a bookstore at university just after final exams were over. And I never looked back after becoming a crime reader through the Rebus series. So there's those as well. I can't put them back because Harry's on the shelf. Okay, question four was Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. What's the most unusual book you've ever read? This is going to be the same answer as Jack's answer in her tag because we've just recently read this together. Without question, the strangest book I've ever read is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. This book is like no other book. It is absolutely mind bending and just a real trip of a book so yeah definitely the strangest book I've ever read there's footnotes aplenty there's appendices there's um storylines within storylines within storylines and and we have no idea how much of it is true either so just absolutely insane this book um, before I read that because I read that very recently I would say that one of the most unusual books I've ever read was Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson um, this is a really strange book about drugs basically and, and Las Vegas and it's a really really funny book excuse me and it's a really, really funny book. Number five is Where the Wild Things Are by Morris Sendak. I know where my wild thing is, he's on the shelf. What's your favorite book featuring the natural world? My choice for this would be Tom Cox's books. I've picked up Ring the Hill here because he just writes so beautifully about nature and I love his unique style. So he started writing nature books with 21st century yokel, although before that there was a series of cat books which also had a little bit of nature writing in them. Um, Ring the Hill is the second one, the sequel to 21st century yokel, and I think I enjoyed this one the most. But yeah, they're basically series of essays about nature, walking, um, all the things that Tom Cox enjoys in his life, and I find his work really really engaging and I find the nature in them beautiful. Question six is Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown and the question is do you read at bedtime? Do you read to someone else at bedtime? Did anyone ever read to you at bedtime? So for the first question yes I read at bedtime. I'll usually try and go up to bed and maybe read like a couple more chapters of what or a few pages of whatever I'm reading. If I'm too tired for that, I'll put on my audiobook, but I do tend to fall asleep after like five minutes of the audiobook, so I don't get much reading done just before bed. I don't have somebody else that I read to at bedtime, but my mum and dad used to read to us at bedtime, my mum mainly, when we were younger, and yeah, we had some wonderful books shared with us in that time. The Borrowers, um, the whole Little House on the Prairie series, Narnia books, Charlotte's Web. I can even remember my mum reading us The Hobbit when we were starting to get a little bit too old to have bedtime stories. And I just loved bedtime stories so much. I think bedtime stories are the best. So yeah, fond memories of that. And leading on from that, we have number seven, Guess How Much I Love You by Sam McBratney and illustrated by Anita Jaram. Who has the who had the biggest influence on you as a reader? And that would be my mum. My mum read to us from when we were born. There were always books in the house. And me and my mum have always talked about books together. Like we've recommended books to each other. We don't always have the same taste, 
but my mum is a prolific reader and I absolutely love discussing books with her and passing on what we've read. Yeah, she's introduced me to some amazing books. Um, I've introduced her to Cloud Cookie Land. Like, my mum has definitely hugely, hugely influenced who I am as a reader. And in turn, I have passed on books to her that I've really enjoyed and shared series with her that I've really, really enjoyed. Leading on from sharing books, the final question is The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Which book or set of books would you give to an emerging reader or which book have you given as a gift more than once? I think the emerging reader question, you need to base it on the reader. So I love buying books as gifts and I buy books as gifts for the children in my life very frequently. When my friends have had babies, I've um, always bought them as their first present, a uh, like a cloth book or something like that. And as they grow up, they get more books from me. So a book that I've definitely bought more than once for a really young child is Dear Zoo. Um, a book I love to give is My Cat Likes to Hide in Boxes by Eve Sutton and Lindley Dodd. Fantastic book to give. And the latest series I've introduced someone to, to my best friend's daughter, I have been giving her the series of Unfortunate Events books. And I think she'll soon be ahead of me on those because I'm only up to book eight, but I think she's enjoyed them, so that's good. And yeah, I just love giving people books that I think that they will enjoy. I think there's so much pleasure to be found in matching the book to the reader and yeah, giving books as gifts. I love to do that. That's all for the picture this tag. I think this is a fantastic tag by Shelley and Jack. I know that they've tagged probably all of the people who I would have tagged. So if you're watching and you haven't been tagged in the picture this tag, I would urge you to um, do this tag. It's really, really fun and quite short. And I liked thinking about all the different types of books and all the book questions. So thank you, Jack and Shelley for inventing this one. Yeah, and I hope you're all reading some fantastic picture books for Picture This 2022. You let me know in the comments down below if you've read and loved any of the books I've talked about today. Let me know what are your favorite books to give as gifts. And yeah, please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.